a few weeks ago I visited Florence, Italy and a few cities in Croatia, something I still feel so lucky to have experienced and it was honestly such a magical trip filled with new friendships, tons of gelato, great views and the clearest water I've ever seen. Travel is quite possibly one of my favorite things in the world and I only half jokingly say that it's the only reason I make money besides food and shelter. There was a part of me that was a little nervous because it had been so long since I traveled to a new country, but I was excited to see what it would unlock in me. And unlock it did. So I wanted to share a few things I learned, relearned, or simply thought about during my time in Europe and where it leaves me now. Before leaving, I'd honestly had this uneasy feeling for months that my life in DC just didn't quite feel right. I was and still am tired of the mundaneness that working a nine to five remotely brings and life just felt really lackluster. I also feel like I'm at a point in my life that feels both very uncertain and like I have no idea what I'm doing. So yeah, that's where we're beginning this trip. Chapter one, instincts or anxiety? The first few moments I touched down in Europe were really quite something. I was running on zero hours of sleep, ran past the literal spot in the Paris airport where I began my study abroad nearly three years ago, while running to my connecting flight, which I almost missed. And then I landed in Italy very seamlessly and promptly forgot all of the Italian that the Duolingo Al had taught me. But what struck me about that first tram ride in Florence was how completely like myself I felt, totally at ease. This was in complete contrast to the few days before the trip where I was trying to frantically make plans for every city we were visiting, I was so anxious that my flight would get cancelled, I was worrying about every little thing, until I had to tell myself to pause and learn to identify the difference between when my instincts are trying to protect me and when my anxiety is irrationally scaring me. When I studied abroad, I did so many crazy things, from taking overnight buses, to nearly getting stranded in a city, but the chaos was just part of the thrill of travel. That 19-year-old self still inspires me to this day to put myself in new, challenging situations, do things despite feeling nervous, and above all, prioritize traveling. Chapter 2. Abandon Expectations I really had few plans for this trip. I used to be someone that would do tons of research before visiting a place and know all of the spots to go, but I find this pretty exhausting and honestly kind of boring to see a place through the eyes of so many others before you see it with your own. Planning less meant I had fewer expectations. In travel, there is absolutely no way to ensure that everything's going to go right, so I find that the more I abandon my expectations for a place, the more present I feel and the more I'm grateful for however the trip goes. Sure, I had a few activities in mind, but honestly, I was just so happy to exist in these new countries. I've let go of having expectations for anything in my life for a while now, whether it's moving, meeting people, a new job, and it's honestly served me so well. So to have that trust in myself for something that felt so much higher stakes, you know, an expensive trip to Europe, it felt so liberating. Chapter three, trust your gut. So yeah, I do kind of find it hard to trust myself, to trust my gut, but I find that the more I do it, the freer I feel. This is also one of the reasons I didn't plan much, because I knew in my gut that what I find the most joy from in traveling is just walking around, talking to random people, seeing good views, and eating well. It's really easy to watch travel vlogs and think that you need to have those experiences, but I find that while traveling, it's so important to just listen to what your heart wants to do and not worry about how those experiences come across to others. Personally, one of my favorite things is the conversations that I have, whether it's asking locals for recommendations, to talking to random people in hostels, to pushing myself to engage in conversations with strangers just to practice my French. I crossed paths with so many different lives on this trip and had the chance to express myself in bits and pieces of four different languages, something I never get to do in the US. I experienced that childlike wonder hearing passing banter in tongues from around the world and felt that ache once again to learn more languages and meet people from around the world. Chapter 4, Listen to Your Body I'm thankful to say that this trip was pretty seamless, but that doesn't mean it was 100% easy. Florence was almost 100 degrees, and many times I was nauseous, dizzy from the heat, even afraid I might pass out. 
I'm notorious for walking insane amounts when I travel and the heat definitely humbled me a little bit. I was forced to find that balance between pushing myself to enjoy the few short days I had with the reality that I had to take care of myself in order to make it through those short days. I realized I was asking myself so often, how do I feel? And then responding accordingly to that, something I just don't do enough of at home. On a practical level, it also showed me the importance of building in rest into your travel plans. The train and bus rides that I was initially dreading for being a time suck ended up being really enjoyable and a much needed pause. This trip really reinforced in me that my mind is the greatest companion I have and that attitude is everything. Travel is one of the most stark examples of how your reaction to situations can literally alter yours and everyone else's experience. You're forced to reckon with so many moments while traveling. Food isn't as good as you expect, the exhibit is closed, you almost missed your train, your leg hurts a lot, there are people yelling at night in the hostel. The list is endless. There are so many touch points throughout the day where you have to decide how are you going to approach a trial and often you have a split second to decide. You guys know the tagline of this channel is spread love, and I really stand by that. It was so enriching to be faced with all of these situations and know that no matter what, I was going to choose love, compassion, and acceptance and see where it took me. And I'm so happy that I made that decision. What captivated me most about this trip was that in nine days, I felt so much. I felt tons of emotions. I felt exhaustion, thrill, bliss, curiosity. Even physically, I had felt salty water, I had aches and pains, felt heat, mosquito bites. I was just experiencing so much life. Traveling is such a privilege, and of course you get to see all of these beautiful places. But the other thing I love about it is that it challenges you. It's not rainbows and butterflies, but rather experiencing the full range of human emotions, physical feelings, quite simply what it means to be living. Days after returning to the US, I think that's the best description of the unease that I'd been feeling for the last six months. Life has just become so comfortable. And don't get me wrong, I am so grateful for that. Stability is wonderful, and I'll be the first to admit to the bliss of routines and a comfortable home. I do think it's really important to find joy and novelty and bliss in the simplicity of everyday life. But my goodness, does it feel like it's been a while since I've been challenged? Since I've felt things deeply, good or bad, since I've touched on the full expanse of what it means to be alive. Ever since coming back, I can't shake the feeling that I need to go out again as soon as I can. I don't know how, or when, or where yet, but I'm certainly on a mission to make some changes. So perhaps this is the start of that journey, and I hope you'll come along. As always, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Bye!